Hello everyone! In this video, I will show you how you can use this tool to create an event or book an appointment in Google Calendar. This tool uses Google Sheets to record your created events. You can view your created event in this web app or inside Google Calendar. Let me show you the demo. Here in this form, I have fields for capturing title, description, event date, and time, duration, and attendees. The data captured by these fields will be used to create an event object that will create an event in your primary Google Calendar. If you want to receive notification via email or SMS notification, then you need to turn on this notification. Here category is an additional field. You can add as many additional fields as you like. It is not required in event creation and hence won't show up in the calendar, but the additional field will show up in your Google Sheet and in the table view of this web app. You can have many such additional fields to suit your requirements. Now let me fill this form quickly and submit it. Our event has been created successfully. Now let's check the calendar. Here you can see the created event for the provided duration. Let me open this. Here you can see all the details that came from the form. You can also view it here on the web page. Click on the table view to view all your recorded events. You can expand the row to reveal Actions buttons like View, Edit, and Delete. Click on the Detail button to view it in a nice detail view card. If you wish to edit your event, click on the Edit button to open it in a separate tab. There you can change any fields and save the changes. Let's try changing a few fields. I will resubmit the changes. This will overwrite your previously created event in your Google Calendar. Let's check that in the calendar. And it seems it has correctly updated the event with our new changes. You can also delete your event by clicking this delete icon. This will also delete the event from the Google Calendar. Let's check if it has been deleted from the calendar as well. See, the event has been deleted successfully. Now let me explain how you can make this yours. Please watch it till the end to know all the do's and don'ts. First of all, make a copy of this spreadsheet from the link given in the description below. You are requested not to edit the header fields in this tab. You can delete the old data from row 2 onwards. In the next tab, you can view your recorded events. I have provided a simple formula to parse the data in the response sheet and fetch the parsed record here. You can drag this formula down to cover more rows. In the Contacts tab, you can list all your attendees. Please do not change the header field in cell A1. Then open the script editor by clicking Extensions and then App Script. Now we need to deploy this to get the working URL for the web application. Click this Deploy button, then choose a new deployment.
select web app as the type of the deployment. In description, you can write anything like version 1. In execute as dropdown, select me. In who has access to dropdown, you can select any of the three depending on your use cases. I will choose only myself so that only I can access the web app. Then click deploy. It will take some time and then it will ask you to authorize the attached script. Go ahead and grant all the necessary permissions. Once the deployment is complete, you will get the URL. Open this URL in a new tab. And here is your working web app. Now to customize it, go to the script editor. Open file named Schema Mixin. There, you will see all the fields that we have used in our event creation form. You are requested to leave these fields above this comment line as it is. Especially, do not edit name attributes as it is tightly referenced in the app script code. However, you can change the labels if you want to. Below this comment line, you can add your additional fields. Here you can see I have added a category field. You can delete this if you don't want it. If you want to further customize it, I suggest you watch my previous video titled Web Forms with File Uploading. I will post the link in the description below. That video also discusses other resources used in this project. The current project utilizes most of the codes from that project. There, I have explained the customization part in more detail. If you found this useful to you, then please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.